Let's make a transition effect that can function as a riser or a faller depending on the mod wheel position. You can download this preset in my new preset pack called Ear Candy. Ear Candy is 120 transitions, soundscapes, sequences, swells, and stabs that can easily be searched and easily edited to fit your production. A link for that's in the video description. If you're on the fence, check out the demo version, which includes 10 of the presets for free. Now, before I jump into a step-by-step -step tutorial, I wanna do a high-level analysis of what's going on here. So we have white noise going through a flange filter, that flange filter is going through a bandpass filter, and then the cutoff of those filters is being modulated by an LFO. Now, since these filters are 100% key tracking, I'm also modulating the distance of that modulation with the note parameter. So the note is controlling how much this cutoff is changing because a higher note is gonna have less distance to travel than a lower note. I'm also uh, modulating that modulation amount with the range macro here, so I get even more control over how far the uh, cutoff travels. Then with LFO3, this is controlling side chain. So with this shape, we're controlling the level here at a quarter note tempo, and then that modulation is being edited with macro 3. Uh, macro 4 is controlling the resonance of the flange filter, so you'll get more of a tonal sound with a higher value there. And then the mod wheel is controlling the direction. So LFO1 is modulating the cutoff of the filters up, and LFO2 is modulating the cutoff of those filters down. Uh, from 0 to 50% on the mod wheel, uh, this modulation is taking place. And then from 50% to 100% on the mod wheel, this modulation is taking place. So basically, in short, if you want it to be a riser, you don't change the mod wheel. And if you want it to be a faller, you move the mod wheel up past 50%. To get started, initialize preset. For this one, I'm going to be using the sample oscillator, so you can turn off oscillator 1. We're going to be using the white noise. I'm going to turn on filter 1. I'm going to set this to a comb filter, and for this one, it's going to be low high flange negative. Now I'm going to route in the sample. And now what you'll hear is it's boosting the harmonics um, of whatever this cutoff point is. But since it's negative, it's only going to be boosting the odd ordered harmonics. So the harmonics you'd find in a square or a triangle wave. So I'm going to control the resonance of that filter with macro four. And so you'll notice the higher the resonance, the more of that tonality that we hear. Lower resonance is just going to sound more like noise. So I'm going to use something like 0.8 for this, and I'm going to label this flange res. Now that I've done that, I'm going to turn on filter 2. This is going to be a 12 decibel analog filter, and it's going to be almost a bandpass filter. It's going to be sort of a mix between a bandpass and a high pass because I'm going to set this blend to uh, 1.2. 1.2. So then I lower the resonance, and you can see it's letting in just a little bit more of the high end here. So if I route in filter 1, now we can hear that. Now I'm going to turn on key tracking 100% for both of these filters. So now it's going to match whatever note I'm playing. All right, so now that we've done that, let's modulate the cutoff with an LFO. So I'm gonna make this a riser first, so I'm gonna set this to saw up, and then this ramp here is gonna modulate the cutoff of these filters. So if I drag that over. Now it's repeating, because I have that set to trigger, but I can set that to envelope, and it will stop up here. So now I also wanna control the length of this, so I can make this fit whatever production I'm doing. I imagine the slowest I'll ever want is 16 measures, so I'm gonna drag it down there and then use macro one to speed it up. And now I'm gonna call this speed. So now that I've done that, um, I'm gonna control the range here because right now it's always moving 76 semitones. 
uh, regardless of what my starting point is. So if I start up here and I move uh, 76, is it 76? Yeah, 76 semitones up, well, you're only gonna hear like the first small fraction of the riser because it's gonna leave the audible range. So I'll demonstrate that. So here it is at middle C. But now if I go up three octaves, you know, the, I couldn't even hear the last half of the rise. So in order to avoid that, we can use the note parameter to control how much uh, this modulation takes place. So if I drag over note to these, and if I turn these all the way up, I'm almost there, but right now, the higher the note, the more the modulation, and we want the reverse of that. So if I go to matrix, and I go to these note modulations, by default, they're saw up. But if I invert them to saw down, now the greater the note value, the smaller the amount of modulation that's taking place. So now, theoretically, if I play a middle C, it's going to end at that same point as if I play two octaves higher. And it sounds like it does. It sounds like it's slower if I play a higher note because it has less distance to travel over the same amount of time. So now that I've done that, I want to control that range with a macro. So I'm going to use macro 2 for this. So I'm going to drag that over. So with a zero value here, no modulation will take place. It's just going to stay put. But at 100%, it'll be the full range like before. But maybe I don't want it to go quite that high. I can dial it in uh, by ear by having it play all the way through and then adjusting this. I think that sounds pretty good. You know, you can dial it to taste for whatever your production is because most of the time um, you need to adjust to fit your transition, right? You're transitioning from one section to another. You don't want it to sound uh, out of place. You want it to match the frequency range of whatever you're working with. So I'm going to adjust this. I'm going to label this range. So now that I've done that, I'm going to add in another modulation. I'll use LFO 3. You'll know why I'm skipping LFO 2 in a minute. Uh, and this is going to be like a side chaining effect. So that kind of has like this pulsing effect um, that's very common in dance music. So I'm going to manually draw this in. I have it set to 16 here. You can go with eight. Um, and then let's pull on this, make this a little bit curved. And then I'm going to set this to quarter notes. Now I'm going to turn down the level here and I'm going to use this to control the amplitude of my white noise. So it's giving us like a little side chain effect. I'm going to go like this. Uh, but what if we don't want that? It's a little bit extreme. Well, let's control that with macro three. I'm going to drag that over. Um, but now at zero side chaining, we're going to get no volume. So I can drag this over to level, but now it's still no volume because that modulation is happening in reverse. So we can flip that modulation, uh, macro three to sample level by clicking saw down. And now with this macro at zero, I'm gonna get no side chaining. And at three, excuse me, at 100%, it's gonna be 100% side chaining. I think it sounds best somewhere in between, maybe 0.7. So I'm going to label this side chain. Okay, so right now what happens is if I move this all the way up to the top, it keeps going. But what if I want it to taper off once it gets to the top? Well, we can do that with LFO4 here. And let's, um, I'm going to double click to add a point. I'm going to change the shape of this to be something like that. 
And I'm going to use this to control the volume. And remember, volume is being controlled by macro three. So I'm going to uh, move LFO four to those uh, modulation amounts. Oh, and I need to match the, the tempo here. So if I bring this to 16 slash one, and I drag this over, and I need to set it to envelope so it doesn't repeat. So now it, it doesn't sound very natural because it just kind of decays really quickly here. Um, and it's dependent on the tempo, right? If, if it's a very fast tempo, it's gonna be a very fast drop in volume. Or if it's a very slow tempo, it's gonna be a very f uh, gradual fade. So what we can do is use macro one to control morph here. So for morph, we're gonna be using LFO four. We can sort by source, go to LFO four, I'm gonna drag that over to these. Is that macro three? What did I do? We want LFO four right there. So drag that over to morph and I'll explain what this does in a second. Now uh, for macro one to morph, it's called uh, modulation power. You can invert that. Let's go saw down. Saw it down. So now, basically that's like modulating this. So a, uh, a, a higher, excuse me, a, a lower speed value is gonna have something like this, whereas a uh, higher speed value will just have the default uh, uh, slope here. So I'll demonstrate that. So now if I have a really slow tempo, it won't have that super long fade. It really only faded at the very end there, which is what I want. And then if I do a fast speed, it's just gonna do this default or something close to it. So now I can also use I'm also gonna use um, LFO4 for reverb. So it's only gonna have like 10% reverb by default. I'm gonna increase the time here. I'm gonna decrease the size to about 30. I'm just gonna cut out the lows. And then let's see, size, time. Uh, I'm gonna increase the high cut here so it's not cutting out quite as much. Let's go with 110. Um, so now I'm going to use LFO4 to give it more mix and a little bit more time. So I'm going to set this to maybe about 0.2. And then with time, I got to be kind of subtle with this because it gets out of hand really fast. Maybe just 0.1. And then I got to invert those because right now it's going to start at full and then go down to nothing. I want the opposite to happen. I want it to go from its default value all the way here, and then at the very end of the sound, I want a reverb throw. Um, so LFO4, reverb, reverb. Now we just gotta set these as saw down to invert them. So let's take a look at the effects and see if we did this right. So you notice at the very end, you get that nice room sound that's you might not want all that room sound during the riser because it could clutter stuff up um, but it's kind of nice at the end there um, so now that i've done all that let's make this more modular let's make it so that we can turn this from a riser into a downer faller whatever you want to call it and we're going to use lfo2 for that so basically we're just going to repeat all the steps we did for lfo1 but with this shape a down shape so I'm gonna drag this over to the cutoff here. I'm gonna turn those up all the way to 128. I'm gonna drag note to those. And then I'm gonna drag, well, before I do that, we need to invert those. So let's sort by source. Let's go to note. 
these ones are already inverted. We want these to be saw down as well. So now let's drag over the range to those. So now what we need to do is have something control how much these modulations are taking place. Because right now, these modulations are going to cancel each other out. If I did this right, which I didn't, I need to set this to envelope, and I need to set the tempos to be the same. So now they should cancel each other out. Right, so it's going nowhere. So now I need to grab the uh, mod wheel, and I'm going to control these uh, with a pulse shape. So basically what you want to do is use the paintbrush tool here with the step shape and then you want to set this grid to 2 so that we can draw in a uh, pulse wave basically. So you're going to do that for both of these and then click on the paintbrush and then adjust this so that you don't have that extra line there. Then we're going to drag over mod wheel to these other two modulations. So these are the modulations um, that make the sound go down, that make the pitch go down. So for those, let's do the opposite. I'm going to click on this paintbrush. From uh, 0 to 50%, it's going to be nothing. Then 50% on, it's going to be 100%. So now what I've done is I've set it up so that with no mod wheel movement, it's a riser. And then if I move the mod wheel up, now it, it falls. So that's a pretty cool way of, of being able to switch the direction of any kind of transition effect. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.